everything goes green for St. Patrick's Day. Landmarks are lit up green, rivers are dyed green, in border counties even they're diesel. <laughs> the real historical Patrick is much more interesting than the man of myth. But what do we actually know? <laughs> the real Patrick is somebody who's quite angst-ridden, and he's somebody who freely admits that he has many flaws. The Patrick of legend is essentially like a, a superhero. He was awesome. Who's awesome? Patrick. I didn't know he was real. He was <laughs> At the end of July every year, pilgrims process up the mountain. And people walk up it in their bare feet like one of us they do. is doing now. <laughs> The Christian community in Ireland see Patrick as a loose cannon. He's a maverick. Uh, he's an oddball. He's just on the right side, I suppose, of lunatic. You know, he's, he's one of these guys that we would regard as very impressive, but not the kind of guy you want to sit beside on the bus. Patrick was very much an outsider coming in and living by the rules of the tour and by the tribal law. Mm. That's disgusting. An honour man brad on fassa, ex nov salin vanaha, slon, slon, gafol. It wasn't until about the 16th century that paganism was seen as bad and that Christianity was seen as good. But up to then, you could hold both. Only Ireland would have a patron saint who committed a great crime as a teenager and still have the main juvenile detention centre in the state called St. Patrick's Institution <laughs> for young offenders. We'll give you a pair of fifth century shoes. Why your bloody shoes down at the bottom of the hill? <laughs> I nearly fell in my hole down there. <laughs>